of the kids with disabilities, they're often left out and left behind. So the My Bike program is really aimed at providing children with disabilities the same opportunities all of us parents want for all our kids. To be able to ride in the neighborhood with your brother or sister, you know, to have typical childhood experiences. To have the freedom that you got when you were allowed to ride down the street before your mom called you and said, come back. Um, and I think for a lot of the kids who have disabilities, there's so many things their family tell us they can't do. So to be able to have something they can do, the pride they have in themselves is overwhelming. And I don't think that should be minimized. Every child wants to feel proud of what they do. Of course, you know, as Mr. Rogers would say, everybody should be loved for who they are. But there's still that dynamic. You know, just like you're proud of something you write. You felt good about it. And um, these kids, so it's riding a bike becomes something they're proud of. And it gives them joy. So that's, that's the other big driver for me, that they get joy out of it instead of being left out and left behind. So that's really the, the fundamental part of the program is to give them those opportunities because you never know what it can be until you get the chance. So many of these parents tell us our kids can't do it. And then because of how these bikes are designed, they are able to do it. And it changes not only the child's life, but the whole family. And then I think from what we saw today, it begins to change a community because like a couple educators spoke to me and said, well, couldn't we do this in our schools? Like, sure, sure. And then, you know, kids with disabilities begin to be looked at as kids first. That would be a big goal of mine. You know, if they could be seen as kids first, you know, we all have differences. We all have challenges, no matter what it is. We kicked off a year ago with, with Governor Corbett and the support of, like, Highmark and Bear and the Penguins and the Pirates and, and County Executive Fitzgerald. And so when we gave out our first 92 bikes at Christmas last year, Two-thirds of them were from Allegheny County. But our service area is 10 counties. So, but you know, the, the counties that are more rural, like Armstrong or Fayette or Green, <laughs> it's much harder to penetrate. So what we did was we launched a strategy where we were working with the community hospitals in all those counties. So we worked with Excella, and we started hosting these events at Excella where they helped us identify kids. And so it became really um, that's how the Community Foundation came to one of the events and saw it. I think, isn't that what happens? You see, you don't know before, it's nobody's fault, because we all, until we're experienced from it. So it was great to have that partnership. Highmark opened the door to Excella for us, and then we created a partnership with Highmark and Excella, and then led to this next step. And, and now I was on the phone this week with the IU up here, you know, because they really see like, we have 90 openings at the moment. That's a lot of bikes. You know how it swings. We'll have too many kids, too many bikes. Well, right now, because of the gala we have, we have a lot of bikes. So if we could get the word out. Now, they're going. Uh, on, on November 1st, we had uh, 104. Now we're down to 90. So you can see they're going to go quickly. And so, really, those communities that organize the most effectively are going to get a share of the bikes. So that's where you could see the wheels turning and people here today will can't we get more organized? And I think really, if you think about it from a community foundation perspective, isn't that cool? And I know Grant is all about it, you know, being a catalyst. They're not just funding, but you know, lighting a, a, you know, a match that lights a much bigger fire. And uh, that's partly why I admire his leadership, that kind of mentality. And if that happens up here, it's great, you know. You know, we start with a little fire, but a big fire burning for kids with disabilities. The county treasurer, Allegheny County, John Weinstein, what John did a couple of weeks ago, he distributed this bike flyer to 7,000 Allegheny County employees, 4,000 retirees. And I said to him, John, if you do that, I'm going to predict for you what's going to happen. The next Monday, before 10 o'clock, I said, we're going to get a call from the sister of one of your employees who's going to say, my brother got this in his pay envelope, and he called me to see if it would help my daughter. Well, sure enough, that exact, it wasn't by 10, it was before 9.30. But I think, so if people realize, you know, they hear about it, somebody reads something you wrote, or they read something in the trip, they were here today, they're gonna call somebody in their family. Because, you know, if you think about it, just by the sheer numbers, every family 
the broad reaches of it, have some child with a disability. You know, could be a you're, you're the great aunt or whomever, and, and that's how it works. So really, the families can go right on our website, download the application. They don't have to go anywhere. They can fill it out at home, send it into us. So that's a great thing. And then what these bikes have done, Mike Schneck talked about it a little bit, but the families find us through the bikes. Then they get plugged in like to the Halloween party. We used to have just one, but this year, Bear had to host two because we've got so many new families from these bikes. And it was so cool, Jerry McCleary, I was a regular Mad Hatter. He was dressed as the black Mad Hatter, the president of Bear. You know, and just the reverberation of that, those people knock themselves out. So the families start with a bike, but then they find a community where they're accepted, they're not judged, because so much of the time these kids get judged and the families get judged. You know, like if they, um, when some of the kids need to make sounds, well, people think, well, why can't you control your kid, you know, when really, if we just let them be, it is what it is. And um, so it's exciting to me that through the bikes, they find a community that supports them. Like one mom said, we'll have open sharing, kind of like what I did today, but we'll have open sharing at the, you know, we have a holiday party with 350 people. And one mom said, I won't forget it last year, she said, um, when I share here that my daughter did the first revolution on her bike, you know, one pedal run, People here, they get it like, oh, they're so excited. I tell my friends and they go, oh, okay. You know, because they, they you know, they're not living it. You can't really fault them. They're not living it. But other families who are living it, they're jumping up and going, she did it, she did it. And so I think it's so beautiful if they can find, we all need encouragers, you know, people who are rooting our kids on and, and whatever the challenge is, you know. And uh, so um, all that's on the website, you know, varietypittsburgh.org, Pittsburgh spelled out. And, and, you know, I would encourage families to look and um, I think what can happen is we really then make, and this is what's great about the foundation, we end up making these kids an issue. You know, it becomes talked about, you know, and uh, that's my hope that, um, you know, we can look at other needs and, you know, like I think with grants leadership. I mean, like I said to our board one point time last year, I said, I know you think transportation isn't our issue, you know, all the transportation stuff, but these kids are going to grow up. At some point, they're going to need to get on a bus to go to work. Maybe they're only working 15 hours a week, but it's still 15 hours. It's very important to their lives. So hopefully it opens a door to have other discussions, you know, about what are the needs of, you know, what are the broader needs and how do we build a better community to support these kids. So, yeah, it's... It's a blast right now. One of the hospital CEOs said, I'm quitting. I want your job, you know? <laughs> because, you know, you saw it today. I mean, it, it's such, just such a, you know, when you see these kids didn't ride these bikes for the first time, it's, it's awesome. I'm, I'm a different person because of it. it's changed my life. I feel very privileged uh, to be a part of this, you know, watching their joy. And it's kind of like, so they come to the holiday party and we have this band, Delta Blue. These kids are so free. They're dancing. Some are dancing in their wheelchairs. Some of their brothers are holding them while they're dancing. They're, they're so uninhibited. Me, I'd be worried about, I wonder what Chris is thinking. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm not that comfortable, you know. Not them. They're totally comfortable. You know? They're just letting it all hang out. I admire it. I think it's so great. So, yeah, that's what we're hoping, you know, to build a broader community, have a bigger discussion. While they get things like mobility, like we'll have to tackle. One of the things I want to tackle, for example, is um, communication devices. Hmm. You know, like schools are providing iPads, mm -hmm. but you can't take it home. Well, if you're a nonverbal child, you've got to communicate at home just like you do in school, right? Like one mom said to me, Charlie, when I take my daughter to the grocery store, she has to point at everything she wants. Hmm. She said, I'm not complaining, but could you understand what I'm talking about? How long it takes us to shop while she points to it. We've got to go down, up and down every aisle. And, and that's, um, that was profound for me. You know? and, uh, so that she got a bike and we got her a communication device. But I think we have to think through, you know, it's with people like Grant. How do you make system changes? Not mm. just, you know, individual. How do you, and how does philanthropy help guide that to broader change? You know, kind of like what we, did, what we did with uninsured kids. We started with a philanthropic based model, and then we got the state, we used the cigarette tax at the state level, and then we used the cigarette tax at the, the federal level. And that's what I think, if we can create these models that can be leveraged, that's ultimately. Might create a model that can be leveraged into something better.